but there was a blood and guts match, which involved blood, forks, screwdrivers, tables, bed and nails, bed and nails, chairs, Open glass. Broken glass. glass some yeah, impacts. actually, after all that stuff, the fans wanted tables. They started chanting, "We want tables." And they then, also chant. They, when they chant, what is the other thing they chanted? Well, what happened? They got the tables. They I'll, chant, I'll, they wanted, I'll tell you. They, hold they on. Chanted, hold on. They chanted, "We want." I got to build it up. I got to build it up, Dave. Okay. So there's blood, tax, glass, all this stuff. So anyway, there's violence and broken glass, and everyone's getting sliced up. These fans are chanting, "We want tables," which yeah. at first you're like, "Tables." There's all this stuff in there. So then it was about 10 seconds later, I think they all realized, uh, tables. So then they started chanting, we want fire. And they, they never did get They fire. did not get fire. But they did get a bed of nails, which, uh, you ever tried to go buy a bed of nails? A not bed easy. of nails, no. I've never tried to purchase one. Well, uh, yeah, they got one. Nice yeah. one, actually. But it sliced Kenny all to hell. But really, aside what about from Moxley? getting- well, I mean, Moxley's, Moxley's always, back with Moxley's he's back always with sliced all to hell. But here, here's the thing with that bed of nails. So the bed of nails is like an old uh, carnival trick. Yes. Because the idea is, oh my God, you're lying on a bed of nails. But there's so many nails that are that are close enough together that you can lay on the bed of nails and you won't get punctured because you're you're spread out on these nails. In and then th you would lie on the bed of nails, and then you know the guy would put like three cinder blocks on top of you. And then he would hit the cinder blocks with a hammer, but because of physics, like the idea, oh my God, you got hit with a hammer and, and these things on this bed of nails. But really, it's it's uh, you know not a big deal at all when you think about what you think you're you're seeing. But the problem with that bed of nails is Kenny got whipped into the bed of nails, and he hit the bed of nails fine, but then the bed of nails was in the corner. And so the bed of nails kind of bounced and started coming back. And then the bed of nails fell on Kenny Omega and fell sideways and sliced all the way down his body. So uh, he got kind of shredded up a little. And Moxley was all, uh, a lot, lot of puncture wounds, a lot of guys having to get stuff pulled out of them in the morning. But uh, there were no serious injuries no serious in blood injuries. and guts. Everybody unlike is the la unlike fine. The la unlike the last two years. Yeah. But they'll be feeling it. Everyone will be feeling it. Yes. Um, uh, Wheeler came in hurt. Ibushi came in hurt. I thought, I thought Adam Page came in hurt, but I don't. I don't know if that's the case. I just when he walked in, he just didn't seem like himself. But um, you know, and I know I heard he was limping out too after the show was over. So um, you know, when he went to the back, but I don't. I did not hear that there was any kind of a serious injury involving him. But um, they're all going to be feeling this one. Um, because that was a lot, a lot of stuff. It was a crazy match. It's, um, I mean, they, they adver, you know, they delivered more than they advertised. I will say that. You know, it was one of those things where you know, they, people kind of were promised something real, real big and a lot of stuff, and they got a fifty-one minute match that was, uh, you know, very, very violent and and one of the better war games matches that I've ever seen. Um, you know, I was thinking comparing them to the original ones, and of course, it's there, it's. 35 years ago and things have changed and it was way 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 more crazy and you know just way more than those matches but those matches in their day were some of the best matches i mean at, at the house shows and at the arenas that i remember seeing and i it just reminded me watching this of just how but that's good or bad how far things have gone because um those matches were, were so tame compared to this and guys got hurt in those matches too yeah. I mean, this this was a different kind of, uh, you know, th this was, you know, not, not power bombing somebody to the top of the cage on accident and then dropping them on their neck. It was mostly just falling into sharp things. And, uh, you know, a lot of glass, a lot of thumbtacks. And, uh, you know, thankfully, and nobody fell off the top of the cage, even though they did a couple of spots up there. So that was good. Yeah, Matt Jackson and Yuta were up there doing... Um Northern Light suplexes. Ro and rolling stuff. Northern Light suplexes on top of a steel cage. On the cage, top of yes. the cage, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what happened after the show went off the air? What was the, uh, what would happen? So, after the show went off the air, um, Moxley and, um, the, you know, the, 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 uh, Blackpool Combat Club, the ones that were left in the elite, uh, all shook hands. So, they pretty much acted like this was the end of the feud. And then Kenny Omega did a promo and basically said that, uh, Whatever happens next, uh, he's sticking together with the Young Bucks. So, you know, that's... I'm sure that's got everybody talking today. It's got people talking tonight, yeah, yeah. 
I don't know if there's anything. I mean, you know, I don't know where the, the contract negotiations stand. So I guess we'll have to wait and see. And there's months to go. I mean, it's, you know, it's not like, uh, I mean, they're not going to be, their stuff's not going to be done until the end of December. So whatever happens, you know, it's not happening anytime. It's not happening for months. And after that, you know, I mean, there's a lot of things that can happen between now and then. Many, many different things that can change many ways. You know, whether it's other offers or not other offers or things that happen in the company, good or bad or indifferent. A lot of different ways this can go. But uh, I think that I think that they as a group, um, it's a pretty good time to be a free agent. Um, sure. I think. It's, especially if you're big stars. I think it's a pretty good time if you're big stars to be free agents. Well, we do have now a main or event. In, or to be in a contract year. We do now have a main event for the Ring of Honor Death Before Dishonor show, which is Friday. And that is Claudio Castagnoli defending the Ring of Honor world title against Pac. Well, they had a spot in the match where uh, Claudio went for the they, big uppercut in the corner. They had multiple spots. And he accidentally hit Pac, which made Pac very angry. He started screaming at Claudio, and they had to be held apart. And then finally, Pac was just like, fuck it. And he flipped him off, and he left, and he abandoned the Blackpool Combat Club. And that made it five on four. And uh, then eventually they... Uh, Takeshita quit, too. Takeshita was told to leave by Don Callis, and so now it was a five on three. Yeah. And then they uh, handcuffed Moxie to the rope, so it was essentially five on two. And then they killed Wheeler Yuta. And uh, we didn't know at the time, but they explained later that Moxley surrendered on behalf of of Wheeler Yuta to save him from certain death. Yeah. So that um, was the finish. The fans of the didn't the fans in the building didn't quite understand that. And actually on TV when it happened, they they just didn't say it right away either, but they did say it before the show went off the air. So because of that, Claudio and Pac will be wrestling for the Ring of Honor world title this coming Friday. That is a um that's a very short notice, but Tony Khan went through the whole thing. I mean, the original opponent was Eddie Kingston, and then it was Mark Briscoe, and then, you know, this this is how it ended up because Mark Briscoe was just uh, hurting way worse than, than he had let on and finally had to admit he was hurting really bad and needed time off. And Eddie Kingston asked to go to G1, and Tony said that, you know, he didn't want to get in his way, and New Japan wanted him in G1. But Eddie Kingston was the original opponent for this for this show. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.